Hi, and welcome back to the CG Bros. This is Brother Damien, and this is the final part of the series showing you how to take an n class simulation done in Maya and bring it into 3D Studio Max and create a fire simulation using the ThemeFX plugin. In part 3, we left off after tightening up the fuel emission on our flag mesh. Let's continue the simulation. When we reduced the amount of fuel being emitted on the flag, the result was that less fuel was being burned off and less heat was being generated to stretch the flames out, and we lost those nice licking tendrils breaking off the main fire body. Let's finish tweaking the sim. Earlier on, I mentioned that when an attribute is changed, that others may need to be adjusted to compensate or balance it off. That's just the case here. I want to get those licks back, so let's take a look at some of the other settings under the fuel section on the fume effects volume. Now I want the flames to last longer and not to burn off so quickly. That means the fuel needs to burn more slowly and that's what the burn rate attribute controls. Let's lower it down from 30 to 7. Let's also be sure that the burn rate variation is set to 1, which is the maximum. And that adds some randomness. Let's go ahead and simulate this out. And I'll pause it and come back when it's done. Wow! I'm getting pretty excited about how this is looking. Since the flames are burning for longer, we're getting those nice flame licks coming back to the flag. You can really see the details starting to come out here now. We'll kick up the resolution again before we do a final simulation, but this is looking really nice. You know, I am feeling there's a little too much turbulence, though. So let's go up to the system settings and reduce the turbulence down from 0.3 to 0.1. And since I'm reducing the turbulence, I'm going to increase the vorticity to 1 to compensate a bit. I'm also feeling that the flames are overall still bursting out a bit too forcefully from the flag. So come on down here to the fuel section and located just under the burn rate settings, there's a really important attribute called expansion. Now this expansion setting controls how much the fuel expands after it's been emitted. For a really huge explosion, you'd set this value pretty high, but I want a nice subtle flame coming from my flag, so I'm going to reduce this down to 0.1 and then re-simulate. I'll come back when it's done. Alright, the fire is burning a lot more calmly now, but I'd like to tighten it up just a little bit more. I'm going to reduce the amount of the fuel that the flag is emitting, so let's select the object source and reduce the fuel from 10 down to 5. Let's start the sim, and I'll come back when it's done. Alright, let's take a look. This is exactly what I'm going for. The flame is nice and tight on the mesh, with detailed tendrils licking off the flag's tatters. And although the speed of the flames seem to match pretty well with the waving of the flag, it would be more realistic if they were moving a little more quickly. And one of the things I see regularly on demo reels are unrealistically slow flames. You know, unless the fire effect is very large or the shot is designed to be slow motion, flames actually move relatively quickly, and slow flames, while they look really cool, just feel wrong. So let's come over to the Sim tab on the FumeFX UI, and under the Simulations section, let's increase this time scale value from 1 to 2. This basically doubles the speed that time passes. A setting of 0.5 would half the passage of time. So let's also take a quick look now at the shader of our fire. Let's go over to the Rendering tab, and down to the Fire section. This is where we can adjust the color and the opacity of the shader. And by right-clicking the swatch, we can open up and adjust the gradient for a different look. And by clicking here, we can adjust the opacity graph of the fume effects volume. So back on the general tab, let's make a final tweak by setting the spacing value down to 0 0.05, basically doubling our fume grid's resolution. So let's do a final simulation and come back when it's done. Well that took about one minute per frame on my laptop, and I think the results are pretty nice. Now our fire darkened up again since we cut the fuel by half down to 5, so let's brighten it up a bit by going to the Render tab, and rather than kick up the color value, we'll change the opacity. So right click on the Graph button, and disable the Opacity Graph. We're going to let the fire's transparency act as the input for the opacity, because it gives me nice sharp flames in the render. Now I did a render, and here's what it looks like. The speed of the fire feels really good now, and I think we've got that detailed distinctive licking that I was after. The motion is flowing, and it's realistic. I think we're there now with the fire. To finish this properly, I might go back to Maya and retime my flag animation by one and a half times or so, speed it up a bit, and then I'd reload my updated end cache file and resib my fire again. Definitely try tweaking on the settings to get your own results. Now we kept things simple because the main thing we wanted to show you is that changing single values, even by small amounts, 
can have large effects on a simulation. The challenge becomes compounded when multiple forces are added into the scene. The forces start to fight and conflict with each other, and many artists have tweaked endlessly, including myself, trying to work out the proper balance between them. Now don't get me wrong, all I'm saying is that keeping it as simple as possible will make you productive and profitable, and keep your simulations looking good. We also invite you to view the session on rendering fume effects for compositing, where we cover the fume effect shader more in depth, as well as how to render out your fire and your smoke for compositing. This is Brother Damien for the CG Bros. I'll see you next time.